I'm Kevin. I'm an engineer on the Lit team. Uh, and I'm going to give a quick overview of uh, work we're doing on a labs package to automatically generate framework specific wrappers for Lit components. So the goal of this work is to make it easy to give a first class experience to using Lit components in popular frameworks. Uh, before I jump in, I want to first talk a little bit about Web Component Superpower that lets them work in any framework, uh, but then talk about some areas where using Web Components and frameworks still hits a few rough edges and how wrappers around Lit components can help sand off those edges. Um, and then work that we're doing in labs to automatically generate wrappers for your Lit components. So Lit components are Web Components, and this means that they come with a superpower that all Web Components have, which is interoperability. The superpower comes from the fact that they can be instantiated just like any other HTML element. You can use them in static HTML markup, of course, uh, or you can use any of the built-in DOM APIs to create new instances of them, like inner HTML or the imperative DOM APIs like document create element. And this is key because since any framework that creates DOM has to use one of these APIs, that means that any framework can automatically create web components. And this is why you can use web components like Lit in React templates and in Angular templates and in Vue templates um, and just about any framework out there, and they just work. In fact, you can go to customelementseverywhere.com, uh, which is a website, to see how well web components work out of the box in just about any framework. The site runs popular frameworks through a series of tests to make sure that the framework doesn't do anything weird to break compatibility with web components, and they all do really great with one notable exception in React. Um, React has historically kind of had trouble with uh, some DOM concepts like setting event handlers on, uh, and properties on web components. Uh, and the good news is that they've already landed fixes that will uh, address those, those issues in a future version of the framework, giving them 100% uh, on custom elements everywhere as well. So the takeaway is that web components interoperability means that web components will work just about anywhere. And this solves an important problem that a lot of companies face. They have to support a lot of teams building applications using a lot of different frameworks. So Lit and web components allow teams to write design systems and other reusable components once and then vend them to internal customers and external customers building whatever stack they want. But while web components work in every framework, we found that there's a little extra work uh, that we can do to make Lit components work even more seamlessly in the most popular frameworks. Make them work just like any other component in that framework. So the concept here with wrappers um, is that we would still want to do all of the heavy lifting in our web component. So all of the state reactivity, the template, the styling, the event handling, the accessibility, we're going to do all of the hard work in our Lit component just like, just like normal. Um, and then we're going to wrap the component to provide framework specific integration to make the, the, the lit component feel really seamless in, in a given framework. Um, and then that wrapper, that framework specific wrapper basically just delegates to the web component for, for everything else. So let's take a look at what types of things that our wrapper adds. Like I said, web components basically just work. Um, so there's only a few things we have to do to make them really look uh, seamless to the to, to, to a given framework uh, user. So in our React wrapper, for example, um, what, what the wrapper does is it's really just providing template type checking. So it adds TSX compatible TypeScript types for properties and, and, and dispatch events so that when you're writing it in a TSX template, uh, you can get the full power of, of type checking. And then, um, like I mentioned er earlier, React is historically had a, a few issues with some DOM concepts. And so and until React actually ships that, our, our wrapper can, can fix those up. So we can provide uh, disambiguation for properties and attributes so that those are set correctly um, and add JSX properties for event listeners so that you can pass event listeners in idiomatically. So really that's all we have to do to make React work uh, or Lit components look like any other React component uh, to a React developer. And then there's a couple of other um, ideas that we're thinking about adding to the, the React wrapper, things like idiomatic slot slotting so that JSX render props could map to web component slots without having to write the slot attribute uh, or context integration, um, mapping React context to that uh, community protocol that Lit implements uh, in, in uh, the, that Justin covered earlier in, in his, his lab's talk. 
Um, so these are kind of just the little extra extra work we can do in a wrapper around lit components to make them really seamless. And then uh, same for, for other frameworks as well. So the things that uh, we're doing in, in our view wrapper um, is again, adding template type checking. So each framework tends to have its own uh, template syntax and, 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 and type check, you know, framework specific type checking. And so uh, view is no different there. So we wanna add, make sure that lit components can type check correctly when you're using them in view templates. Um, and in here, we're, we're already mapping views v slot attribute to uh, web component slot attributes. So that um, the, the way that you slot uh, child, child nodes and components in view uh, feels idiomatic as well. And then, so we've got the, this much working so far, and then we're considering adding um, forms integration. So uh, view has a v bind concept um, for, for binding to form components uh, that we think we can make go. And then, uh, if we look at Angular, um, the, the things that we're, we're looking at doing in the Angular wrapper, again, adding template type checking, um, and then uh, scheduler integration. So a Angular has a um, kind of bespoke that way that it that it schedules work as components are rendering down the tree. Uh, and we found that we can integrate with their scheduler uh, to ensure that using lit components doesn't have any sort of uh, performance impact there. And then um, again, similar, uh, we may look at adding forms integration. So Angular has a, has a, a form system as well. Uh, and then similar to, to React, we think we can probably work out how to map uh, Angular's dependency injection to the, the lit um, community context protocol. Okay, so in general, the wrappers um, are, are fairly straightforward to to set up. Um, particularly, the, the React one is it's a little factory, and we, we have a talk coming up where Brian will go into to more depth on what it's like to to set that up. Um, but it does require um, mapping certain things in, from the web component, uh, kind of the shape of the web component, describing those to the wrapper, and so that that's some work that you have to do to keep those in sync, um, and so. Um, Another area that we're working on in labs is automatic wrapper generation. Um, and this is uh, the kind of user experience that we want uh, all lit developers to have in order to support uh, you know, the most popular frameworks. All you'll have to do is pull up a new lit CLI, run the gen command, point to um, the path on your file system that contains lit components, tell us what frameworks you, you wanna create wrappers for, and the tool will, will generate those for you. So that supporting uh, the different frameworks using lit is as simple as running uh, one command line. So this is the goal where we're headed with these labs packages. Um, we're gonna build up to this with a series of, uh, actually it, this is decomposed into a series of, of labs packages starting with a new lit CLI. Um, the wrapper generators are just kind of one um, thing that we, one command that we expect to, to have in, in the CLI, but the CLI can be a kind of a host for or any sort of build time things that we want to add in the future uh, in the lab space. Um, the next thing is that we've got a, a new package called Lit Labs Analyzer, which is a static analyzer for uh, lit source code um, and can generate a, a model. Uh, and actually, uh, so the model stored in memory is very similar to the um, community protocol around the custom elements manifest and will uh, eventually be able to, to generate the manifest as well. But we can then use this static analysis, this model of, of the, the lit components um, that you've written uh, in order to generate the, the different wrappers. And then we've got, um, we're working on uh, a wrapper generator for React, Angular, and Vue. Again, with the goal of uh, making, creating, uh, generating these framework wrappers as simple as, a, as one command. All right, so to take a look at where the status of this package is, um, for this one, we kind of put it still under development. It's not quite ready for usage, although it, it's getting close. Um, the kind of known outstanding features that we're uh, looking at doing. So uh, Vue and React um, are already, we, we have basic sub support for Vue and React generation done. Um, the Angular one is still a work in progress because there's there's a bit more sort of a boilerplate we need to to integrate with there. Um, and then we, we've got a bit of uh, code analysis uh, features that we still need to do to cover most uh, most common use cases. Um, and we've got PRs uh, up for a lot of these now. So these are these are kind of coming in, but we need we know that we need to cover subclassing and mixins. Those aren't quite done in the analysis. Um, and then we know because users 
you know, we'll have lots of varying ways that they lay out their, their packages. We want to make sure that the static analysis can, can handle analyzing um, various package layouts. So, so we'll, we'll go through a round of kind of testing against real world um, code that's out there. Um, we, uh, the, the wrapper generators that actually generate NPM packages for, for your um, components so that you can publish like the view component separate from your, your web component. Um, if that's a goal for you. And so because of that, we generate some bo boilerplate like package JSON. We know that we'll need to make those more configurable. So that, that kind of work is not, not yet done yet. Um, and then for, for any of that boilerplate that we do spit out, um, we expect that we'll need to um, have features that allow updating previously generated wrapper, wrapper packages that might have hand edits in them. So that's all kind of work that's, that's still, still upcoming. Um, and then finally, um, Augustine gave a talk on, on the work we're doing in Labs SSR and, and the fact that we're, we're working on framework uh, integrations for SSR and we need to make sure that the, the, the client side wrappers and the service area wrappers all, all play well together. Um, so that's all, all work that we've got mapped out uh, coming up. And then the things we're looking for feedback on, um, again, it would be useful to know how common uh, needing to modify the generator wrappers uh, will be. Um, so if you can anticipate things that, um, you know, if we generate wrappers, things that you might need to 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 uh, augment or, or edit, that would be useful to know. Um, and then, you know, another thing kind of further down the line is thinking about how the, the generator wrappers get tested. Um, current, like generating tests for the generator wrappers is currently out of scope, uh, but we'd like to hear your feedback on that. And in general, um, you know, it, general thoughts and features around around uh, this type of code generation as well. Um, so you can check out the uh, the discussion page for this. Um, eventually the the packages will be available. Um, they'll be consumed through the lit labs slash CLI. So that is the package um, that uh, will point you to uh, once this is all ready. So that's where we're at. Um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.